Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Aloha, I'm Ray Martinino. I'm Patrick Pasquale. I'm JC Kihara. And I'm Kendrick Go. We're here on the campus of our school, Damien Memorial School, situated in the heart of Kalihi, on Oahu. Home base for today's episode of Hikino, the nation's first statewide student news network. Hikino means can do, and you'll see just what students from our teams of schools can do. The episode's team is made up of intermediate and high schools from four islands. From Hawaii Island, we have Hawaii Preparatory Academy in Waimea. We'll go to Kauai to hear from Chiefess Kamakahele Middle School. On Maui, there's Maui High in Kahului. Here on Oahu, we have Kalaheo, Kalani, and Moanalua High Schools, and Wainai Intermediate. And of course, your host for this show, Damien Memorial School, home of the Monarchs. On this show, you'll hear from diverse voices across the island chain. Telling stories that connect community. On Yiki no, can do. Before we introduce our first story, we'd like to recognize the grant organizations that made Hikino a reality. They believe that Hawaii could create the nation's first statewide student news network. They put their faith in us and said, can do. To them, we say mahalo. Now on with the show. Founded in 1962, Damien Memorial School is a private Catholic school for young men grades 6 through 12. St. Damien of Molokai has been the guide for many students to become responsible, respectful, and community-minded gentlemen. In the fall of 2012, the administration decided to open its doors to girls. When the news was announced, it stirred many mixed emotions. But now, the school's communities are welcome to the change. This year's graduating class will be the last class of having an all-male school population. For our first story, we'll go over to Maui, where students from Maui High School will talk about their hometown hero, Oakland Athletics catcher, Kurt Suzuki. Nice! Oakland Athletics catcher, Kurt Suzuki, certainly got it all. I got it, I got it, I got it! In addition to his professional baseball career, he was also blessed with Malia, born last April. But what really makes Suzuki a hit is his time away from his career. Ever since I've known Kurt, he's always been about giving back to the, uh, the Hawaiian community. And I remember talking to him when he was just in, uh, just in the minor leagues for a couple years. And he always would tell me how if I make it there one day, I always want to go back to Hawaii and do something special. In January, Suzuki held the first annual Kurt Suzuki All Pono Baseball Clinic. With the help of many of his former high school teammates and coaches, kids from 8 to 18 had the opportunity to spend a day at Marihara Baseball Stadium, learning about the basic fundamentals that help Suzuki reach the professional level. I had fun because I learned a lot of baseball things, new things I didn't know, and yeah, I look up to Suzuki because he is a major league baseball player and he's from Maui. Remembering his Maui roots is important to Suzuki. It's for the community and uh, for the fans, just to show the community how much I appreciate the support and just kind of the main focus is not just the fundamentals of the game, but to kind of uh, instill in these kids, never give up, keep following their dreams. In addition to teaching the kids about working hard, Suzuki teamed up with the All Pono organization to instill positive values. The value of Pono is, you know, what we share is to do what is right and to make the right decision. Living righteously has helped Suzuki gain respect off and on the field. Kurt does everything right, you know, he's a great role model for the youth and um, for everybody, actually. No matter what base Suzuki will run to, he will always be able to show the youths that living Pono is one step closer from living their dreams. <laughs> this is Elisa Ferrer from Maui High for Hikino. If you'd like to stay connected with what's happening on Hikino, you can log on to our Facebook page. It's full of photos and current information about the show. You can also follow us on Twitter at Hikino Can Do. It's a great way to get reminders on upcoming episodes. As we are preparing to usher in the exciting new school year with the admittance of girls, changes to the school are inevitable. Currently, we are remodeling to make new girls' bathrooms and a PE locker room. 
Damien also has plans with the help of E Ho'opa'a Capital Campaign and a $5 million grant from the T.C. Ching Foundation for a new athletic building, administration building, library, and music room. We now go to Kauai where the students of Chiefest Kamakahelei Middle School will be sharing their story on the Hawaiian Monk Seal. Seals have been coming to our beaches for as long as they've been around to rest and give birth, but they are critically endangered. People are still bothering them and don't realize that their sleep is just as important as ours is. Without that sleep, they can die out at sea from being too tired. Why is it important to protect the monk seals? Boy, that's a, that's a big, big question. There's, there's a lot of answers for that. Number one, they're the most endangered marine mammal in the United States. And they're a critical part of our ecosystem because they're endemic to Hawaii. They, they're from here and exist nowhere else in the world. Their population has decreased so much that they're critically endangered. And every, every animal, I think, on this planet deserves and needs their, spa their place in the ecology of, of the world. As a result of people causing problems to our monk seals, their numbers are dropping drastically, and that's bad because they are only found in Hawaii. We, I, we don't think we lose too many to predators, so I guess the remaining category is man and the dangers from people who might find them threatening or don't feel they belong here. Um, uh, unfortunately, we've had a couple shots, and we work educationally, hopefully, to prevent that ever happening again. So human harassment, natural predators, and then potential of disease. Because of this, an organization called the Kauai Monk Seal Watch Program has been trying their best to protect our seals statewide. Our focus and our mandate has been to educate because we believe that is the path for preserving the uh, critically endangered Hawaiian monk seal. Um, with that in mind, we give uh, presentations to schools, both on this island and on Molokai. Well, we can help by educating everybody about the monk seals and their importance. Um, they're they're um, a native mammal. They're an endemic species to the Hawaiian Islands. They don't exist anywhere else. So that makes them very important and very special. And of course, like I said, they're part of the balance of the health of our ocean. And that's important that we don't upset that balance. If you see a seal on the beach, you can help by giving it space, not making too much noise, and not throwing anything at it. The seals need our help to survive, and saving a seal is not that difficult. Will they survive or go extinct? It's up to you. For Hikino, this is Kylie Nii reporting for Chiefess Kamakahele Middle School. If you have ever been around Damien, you may notice that the students dress in a classy fashion. Students and faculty are required to wear a collared shirt and tie three days of the week. This unique dress code teaches its students how to dress in the professional world of today. In the fall of 2012, girls will be required to wear a school uniform, while the gentlemen are still expected to have a dress code of collared shirt and tie. We now head over to the leeward side of Oahu, where the students of Wai'ana Intermediate share their story on music in their community. One, two, forty-three. Almost every intermediate band on Oahu has a high school band to feed into. The one exception is Wai'ana Intermediate School. The main reason is there's no band at the high school. So what's the solution to this problem? So me and Mr. Sarah started the Wai'ana Marching Band so that the high schoolers could do, um, you know, more band stuff musically. They could come back, they could help. They enjoy music, so this is their only outlet to continue to learn. And I think they also have fun performing, so, and maybe helping the younger students out. The Wai'ana Band has had a lot of big accomplishments. However, they still have one major obstacle lying in their path. Well, that's been one of my motivating, you know, things for me is to take away some of the negativity people tend to have about Y9. Um, you know, the, the fights and the low test scores. But when they see our band, I want them to see happy kids, disciplined kids. Blending the different aged students of Y9 allows the Y9 band to showcase their unique qualities. I think it's our blend of high school students and our intermediate students mingling together for once and actually hitting it off and it being a positive thing rather than hearing about how a high schooler beat the snot out of a little seventh grader. The older people mostly come back and they play with us. They make our 
band sound more full and sometimes they help the younger students with things. From 1961 to 2012, YNI students are still finding ways to enjoy music, even if they have to march to the beat of a very different drum. This is Crystal Sabeto reporting from YNI Intermediate School for Hikino. Here at Damien, we have a hydroponics area where you grow plants in water using an organic nutrient solution without using any soil. This year, we have grown peppers, lettuce, spinach, string beans, and tomatoes. Next year, our science department will incorporate an aquaponic system using the nutrients from the fish water to grow our vegetables and our next harvest. We will now be going to the east side of Oahu where Kalania High School will be telling us about their story on vermicomposting. Vermicomposting is the process of using worms and microorganisms to turn kitchen waste into black, earthy smelling, nutrient rich hummus. Kalani High School students will show you the step by step process of vermicomposting, creating an organic fertilizer. First, we cut the vegetables, then we feed it to the worms, then we then the worms will poop and then we take it up to the garden to grow the vegetables and after the, the, we finish growing the vegetables and they're ready, we pick it and we cook the vegetables then eat it. The first step is to cut up vegetables for the worms to eat. Then the second step is to collect the castings or the worm poop from the containers. The third step is planting using the castings as nutrient-rich organic fertilizer. After the plants have matured, they are harvested. The last step of the cycle is to use the plants that were grown. Here we have Kalani High School students cooking simple spaghetti with oregano. They cut the oregano, heat up spaghetti sauce, boil noodles, and then serve. These are the simple steps in the vermicomposting cycle. With this know-how and a little practice, we're sure that you can do it too. Here I stand in front of our colossal statue of St. Damien. It stands at 7 feet tall, weighs over 1,000 pounds, and is made of pure marble. It was donated by Jonathan and Barbara Pereira and is located next to our school chapel. When our new administration building is built, it will be relocated to our school's new courtyard. We'll now go to Moanalua High School where they'll share their story on teen depression. My own reflection wouldn't look me in the eyes. For years, no one heard my cries. Six feet under in 18 years of lies. 18-year-old Amanda Hicks knows what it's like to be more than just sad. Three years ago, she was diagnosed with both post-traumatic stress disorder and chronic depression. You know, when you hear the diagnosis, it sticks in your head, you know, and then you you try the antidepressants and it makes you feel, well, made me feel plastic. Amanda was once one of two million yearly reported cases of teen depression in the U.S. Clinical depression is a serious, debilitating disorder that negatively affects a person's mood, thoughts, and actions. Went down the road of self-abuse, seeking help came of no use. The monster inside me was running loose. Years and years of emotions in a bottle, gotta live like you're dead. That was my motto, the monster. It's like you put yourself in the hole. And when you're in the hole, you can't see the light. You don't want to see the light. As far as you're concerned, the light never existed in the first place. So I guess once you're there mentally, once you're down, if you don't want to get up, you can't get up. And that is the problem that affects one in every eight U.S. teens today. Dana Yamamoto is a Moanalua High School counselor and she believes that there are many factors that can contribute to depression in teens. It could be um, friend problems, maybe they're um, not getting along with their friends, boyfriend, girlfriend problems, um, and with family, sometimes you know kids are going through changes. Maybe they just moved to Hawaii, they moved into our district, maybe there's um, changes in the family dynamics, um, a divorce, a death, or you know, just, just a change. The bottom line, today's teens are surrounded by pressure. Because of that pressure, suicide is the third most common cause of death among teenagers nationwide. Depressed teens are at an even greater risk. I couldn't stand the memories. 
the nights I feared falling asleep, the silent prayer of death to take me away before I would wake. Something had to be done. I, was I remember my mind. so vividly just laying in the bathtub. You know, my arms already slit. I had blood thinners running through my system, you know, so I'd bleed out. And I was just at this point where I didn't, I didn't care. And I remember right when I was about to black out, I thought about what it was going to do to my little sister. You know, she'd be the one to find me. I wasn't going to do that to her. And so, with this realization, Amanda started on her road to recovery. There was the person who I was and the person who I wanted to be. Today, Amanda is a senior at High Court Program. She's an avid writer, poet, and artist. And she credits her passion in the arts as a healthy way to cope and express herself. It, it occupies my mind. It keeps the restless thoughts at bay when I'm painting. Nothing else matters. It's just the paintbrush, the canvas, and the paint. Now, Amanda looks back at her depression, not as a regretful period, but as an experience to be embraced. <laughs> the decisions I made led me to where I am now. I wouldn't have the passions I have now if it wasn't for those bad decisions. Although depression is a serious disorder, it is not a hopeless one. Amanda, among others, are living proof that recovery is attainable and that there is hope for the future. This is Leah Miyasato at Moanalua High School for Hikino. If you notice a teenager showing symptoms of depression, we advise they speak to a school counselor or teacher. If you'd like to stay connected with what's happening on Hikino, you can log on to our Facebook page. It's full of photos and current information about the show. You can also follow us on Twitter at Hikino Can Do. It's a great way to get reminders on upcoming episodes. In today's world, technology is a necessity that we use every day in our lives. Luckily, this year, Damien has a media center that was donated by John Fielding, the founder of Hawaii Catholic Television. Here, our students can create and demonstrate their video and musical talents. On the windward side of Oahu, we will hear a story from Kalaheo High School's digital media program. There is no such thing as a free education. The money needs to come from somewhere. For Kalaheo High School, the money that has been supporting its learning center, called the Mustang Media Academy, in previous years, contributed to the purchases of equipment students need to complete their projects. Each year, whenever the Board of Education needs to decide which funds to cut, programs like the Mustang Media Academy are on the chopping block. You know, it's really sad that they chose the learning centers to be on the chopping block, where students really benefit from that program. They excel in it. Just to cut that and take that away from students is, is really a tragic loss. Students are said that they should work more together and it's a class where students can definitely do that. And creativity is one of the things that are deprived of. And any student keep the class, keeps everyone's creativity going, gets everyone to work together, and really has an enjoyable class to be in. Through media classes, students are able to connect what they are learning in the classroom and apply it to what will be needed for them to succeed in the workplace. Our generation is becoming more of a technology-based generation than how it's been before. Maybe working with your hands in ceramics or drawing pictures or even running a business maybe might have been done a lot differently than it is now. But as our world keeps changing, it helps a lot more to be able to know how to use programs on the computer because you can use it for anything. Like I think for a lot of jobs nowadays, like you need to have some type of computer knowledge. So I think it's really helpful to be able to know how to use different programs. I was really interested in the idea of like working with media. I didn't know if that was going to be my career when I grew up or anything, but as I've taken the courses of digital media and the Communication Academy from junior and senior year, I really enjoyed it and found that I want to do journalism. If Kalaheo doesn't have Comicad, there's no other program that they offer that's like Comicad. And if students want to be filmmakers or journalists or work in the media in any kind, then they won't have the opportunity to prepare for that in college. Since we live in a technology-based world, schools need continued funding for programs like the Mustang Media Academy to prepare today's students 
with 21st century skills to succeed tomorrow. This is Michaela Chang from Kalaho High School for Hikino. At Damien, we go by the motto, Verliter Age. Translated from Latin, it means to act courageously. Our students stand up to this motto while in and outside of campus. An alumnus of Damien display the true meaning of Verliter Age while on tour in Afghanistan. Jonathan Brostrom, a 2002 graduate, sacrificed his life serving his country in the fight for freedom. His portrait is displayed in our library to offer inspiration to the students. He is a true hero. We now go to the island of Hawaii, where Hawaii Preparatory Academy tells their story of a young motocross champion. My name is Chris Byram. I'm from Port Macquarie, Australia. I moved to Kauai when I was about a year old. I've been riding for about 15 years. My first time would have to be when I was three in my backyard. I had just a little track, me and my dad. By the North Shore, so Kilauea. Yeah, about at that age, started off just me and my family, but later on when I got about 10 years old, there was about seven families of us. There were a lot of friends that were older than me that pushed me to become better. Uh, my dad and his brothers would ride, but my dad was like the key one. He was always, he had sponsors, he worked for a motorcycle shop in Australia. So he would travel around the circuit with them late 1970s. From what I heard, he uh, in Australia he would do the championship, uh, so he did a circuit there. Then when we moved to Kauai, he opened up a shop, and then got me involved, and from there just trained me, rode with me. Because I've grown up in a shop since I was like one, so I've always been in a shop. Uh, right now I ride a Kawasaki KX250F, one bike that I just changed parts on. I am racing a 250B Mod, and the 250B stock. And then I raced the college 16 to 24, and that's an open bike. First competition would have to be when I was six, six or seven years old. But for the mainland right now, I'm racing in the Southwest area. And I'm going to regionals in June. If I qualify from there, I go to the championship race in Tennessee. It's on um, Loretta Lynn's ranch, famous country singer. When you win there, you beat everybody. That's the fastest of the fastest riders. Yeah, I have a lot of local sponsorships and then I have mainland sponsorships that are helping me out. Right now my biggest accomplishment would be the Southwest Area Qualifier I just did. I placed two first and a second. Placed first in the 250B Mod class, uh, college 16 to 24, and then I got second in the 250B stock. Per class is about two heats. So then over the weekend I did about six heats. I've broken my leg twice, my growth plate, uh, I've had multiple concussions. Because the first one was when I was six, I landed sideways, I had the bike land on my leg. Then again when I was 15, I had the bike land on my leg sideways. And I think when I was 15 was the worst one, because when it snapped my tib fib, it also cracked in my growth plate. Winning just makes you get back up. Safety's improved a lot, like before, Back in the day, like you'd have open face helmets. Now you have closed face helmets. We also wear neck braces, knee braces, chest protectors, kidney belts. Boots. It's, it's improved a lot and it's still improving. And when you're committed, you're committed. You don't hesitate. When I'm in the air, it's like when I catch my breath. So I get to like let loose a little bit. I, I see myself riding probably until I can't walk. Well, that's it for this week's show. We hope you've enjoyed the stories we shared from around our island. So join us next week to see what the students of Hawaii can do, only on Hikino and only on PBS Hawaii. We leave you now with a montage of the sights and sounds of Damien Memorial School. Aloha!
Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo! And by Bank of Hawaii Foundation. Investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no.